These professional chefs all want to break into the top ranks of the world's culinary elite. Deciding who has the talent to cut it is MasterChef judge Greg Wallace. I'm getting excited because that is lovely. And culinary legend Michelle Rue Jr. With two Michelin stars, he's expecting perfection. I think you've got cooking ability here. I think you know the standard that we require. Cooking doesn't get better than this. These four chefs have been working in professional kitchens for years, but they want to prove they can compete at their industry's highest level. This is MasterChef The Professionals. This is not their hobby, this is their life. This is their dream. Out of the hundreds of chefs that I've seen come through my kitchens, only a very few really ever make it to the top. They're the ones I'm looking for. In today's show, The Professionals will be set three gruelling tests. Only the best chef will make it through to the quarter-final. In this, the first of the tests, the contestants will not be cooking for Michelle. As one of only a handful of two Michelin star chefs in the country, the four contestants will have to earn the right to cook for him. To whittle them down to the best three, he's sending in his senior sous chef, Monica, to judge them. Move it! Get that garnish on the plate now! Monica, my sous chef, has been working for me for over five years. I trust her judgment. I know that if she says it's all right, mm. then it's good. Monica wants to determine who she'd be prepared to put in front of Michelle. Only the best three chefs will have the privilege to cook for him. The other will be going home. The skill test today is to prepare these artichokes for cooking using a process called turning. You need to snap the stem off here. Then you're wanting to take these off and you only want to go so far. With the knife, follow the shape nice and even all around the sides. Leave it looking like a flying saucer. And what you're left with is the heart of the artichoke, or the big fleshy part, gorgeous. The second part of the test is the palate test. What we'd like to see them do is prepare and cook this lovely rump steak, medium rare. It's also really making it come alive with a good sauce. And there's enough ingredients there for a very good sauce. Monica, I'm actually hungry. Let's get these guys in there and cook the steaks, because I, I want to eat them. Jamie's passion for food was ignited at 15, when he got his first after-school job as a pot washer. I'm good enough to compete against the rest, but I'm not arrogant enough to say I'm going to win. But if I give it as good as I've got, then I shouldn't have a problem. Ten minutes, Jamie. Best of luck. I've got to try and step up to the mark and produce the best I can. I'd love to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. Without a doubt, without a shadow of a doubt, I'd love to. You've got four minutes, Jamie. Your time's up. Jamie, skills test. It's not bad. Not bad. I do see that you have done it before. You used the lemon to keep it from going brown, kept it in the water. That was really well done. It's rare. It's not what I wanted. And it's really over-seasoned. A lot of salt in that. Okay. Thank you. I'm getting the hint of a very good sauce, a little bit of port in there, but it needs to be far, far deeper than that. Okay. But thank you. Thank 
could have gone better. School boy with a stake, but shouldn't make him at this level. I've done the best I could do, and that's all I can do. Twenty-five-year-old Robert quit his job as a roofer four years ago to turn his obsession into a career. I quit my old job and I quit my whole life just so I can concentrate on being a chef. Cook for me, Shiru, he's an institute within himself, and if he appreciate my food, yeah, I'll be pretty stoked. OK, Robert, best of luck. Ten minutes, off you go. I want my own restaurant, uh, without a doubt. Wine bar comes, sushi bars come, uh, fine dining area. There's a lot at stake for me. Can I just ask you, have you ever prepared an artichoke? Never in my whole life. Don't know where to go from here. Le leave yeah. that. Concentrate on what you've got to do now. Give us the perfect steak and a wonderful sauce to go with it. You have one minute. That's it. Time's up. With your skills test, you attempted, you tried, and, you know, marks for your honesty. You needed to put the 100% into that. That's very nice. The seasoning is spot on on that. And in your sauce, that thyme is nice. The steak is cooked really well. That's a nice medium rare for me. Okay. Hmm. No artichoke, good steak. Thanks very much indeed. When they uh, asked me to turn an artichoke, my heart sank. But they liked my steak. It's a 50-50 at the moment. I'm in two minds to have a jump for cry at that, so to see how it goes. Dad of two, Ryan's chefing life started with a part-time job in a Bournemouth seafront cafe. I'd love to cook for Michelle Eugenia. I'm going to have to deliver high standards today for Monica. She knows what he's looking for, so I, I wouldn't expect anything less, so I'm going to have to deliver. Good luck, Ryan. Off you go. I hope by entering this competition, it will put me in a good stead to achieve what I want to do. Eventually, I'd like to have my own gastro pub. To have my own place, I think it would be great. <laughs> One minute left. That's it, out of time. Ryan, what were you thinking? I think I may have used them once in the past, but... What you've done is you've prepared this like you can eat the stem, but that stem is completely inedible. I'm sorry, you failed that completely, mm -hmm. OK? Before we taste your steak, can you tell me what sauce it is you're making there? I tried to make just a shallot garlic and thyme reduction with the pork. Griddle pan gets very, very hot. Any form of alcohol that goes in there, push, normally it's instant burns. flame. We're very lucky that didn't go up into fire. Yeah. Yeah? It's very nicely cooked. Mm -hmm. However, it's very bland. It's a shame. I almost want to let you have another go because the steak is cooked so well. We wanted a medium rare steak. That's right on the button. I mean, that's perfect. 
Hey, 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 what are we going to do with you? I don't know if I've done enough to get through. I don't know how well the other guys have done. I mean, I know I felt all right before I went in there and nerves do get the better of you. Twenty-seven-year-old David has spent the last ten years working his way up to sous chef in award-winning kitchens. I'm really relishing today's opportunity to show the judges what I can do, and uh, hopefully I'll go through to the next stage. David, you got ten minutes. Off you go. Thank you. I love being a chef because it's very creative, every day's different and you're pleasing people at the end of the day and it's nice to see their satisfaction. You've got five minutes left yet, David. David, have you never prepared one of these before? No, I haven't, no. Well, probably best to leave it. You have one minute, David. Sorry. No, go on, go on, carry on. I'm just really, I'm so Don't nervous, I'm sorry. I know oh, we can up. tell. Carry on. Don't give up, good go. Finish what you're doing. Get the sauce on the plate. Okay? Yeah. Come on. Sorry about this. It's fine. David, your your time's up. <laughs> Seriously, I'll well look, you can see. I'm just an absolute wreck it. I apologize. Skills test, you'd never done one before. You know, we could see that. I was wondering when you were going to stop peeling the, the yeah. poor artichoke apart. Because the more you tear off, the more damage you're going to yeah. do to the artichoke, OK? Moving on to your palate test. Mm -hmm. Let's see how it tastes, OK? That is a lovely medium rare. That sauce is really nice. You get the pepper through it. I really like that. Really nicely seasoned steak as well. Thank you. Well done. David, you have cooked that steak to perfection and you have delivered a very good sauce. Have you stopped shaking now? Not quite. You can't give up. No matter what pressure you're under, you cannot give up. Yeah. I am very disappointed in myself at the moment. Hopefully, I, I can overcome the nerves and uh, pull it together if we get through to the next round. That was a tough round. Three of them had never prepped an artichoke before. I'm really shocked. Jamie cooked his steak, made a sauce, but his steak was under. But Jamie managed to get his artichoke done, whereas the other three had no idea. He has to go through. Next came Robert, and when he picked up his artichoke and he couldn't do it, I, I feared for him. But actually, he cooked us a really good steak. His steak was medium rare. I liked the sauce. He did very well. He made up for not knowing how to turn an artichoke. He should go through. That leaves us Ryan and David. Now, Ryan... Oh, my life. The artichoke. What was he thinking? He just peeled and peeled and peeled and peeled and then started... Peeling again? He just mutilated that artichoke. As for his palate test, boom! Did you see that smoke? I thought we were going to have a fire in there. But he did cook us a very good medium rare steak. We discuss nerves a lot and we know it affects people. I've never seen anybody so badly affected by nerves as David. The fact that he did not know how to turn the artichoke just multiplied his nerves. You know, he completely lost it. But at least he managed to get us a lovely cooked steak. It was medium rare. They've both made big mistakes. But which one are we going to put through? I know who I want. The chef that's going to leave us today is Ryan.
right, guys? You're going through to cook for Chef Michel. Don't let me down. Well, on your artichoke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was possibly the biggest nightmare I've ever had, I think. Um, the impression was quite intense. Um, Please that they give me a second chance to show what I can actually do. Quite relieved and quite chuffed. I still feel I could be master chef, but I'm a bit shaken in the grounds at the moment, so let's just see how the next round turns out. I am very relieved, over the moon, excited. Now I've got through, no more nerves. I'm ready to go, happy. It's day two. David, Robert and Jamie are back. This time they have the chance to cook for Michelle Rue Jr. To get through to the quarter final, they have to show him they can deliver the precise, inspiring food expected at this highest level. Welcome back. Now, you earn the opportunity to cook for Michelle Roux. In front of you, you have a sea bass. We are looking for two different dishes, great dishes, using that sea bass. You have the chance to impress. At the end of the day, we will have a quarter finalist, but two of you will be going home. Off you go. The versatility test tells us so much about these chefs. I want to see as well two very different contrasting dishes. I want to see great presentation, simple, but shine and really show me that you can cook. Their larder includes pancetta, plum tomatoes, fennel, chilies, coriander, charlotte potatoes, oranges, eggs, anchovies, and capers. They also have a selection of plates to give Michelle a sense of their presentation skills. Sea bass is one of my favorite fish. It's so versatile. This is gonna be interesting to see if our chefs are actually any good at filleting fish. We're looking for knife skills, precision, cutting and slicing, no bones at all, using the tweezers to pin bone them out. The sea bass must be treated with respect. What I want to see is lovely roasted skin, nice and crisp, but don't overcook that sea bass. It can go horribly in cotton wool if it's overcooked. This is an instant indication of how much quality cooking they do. We should get two plates of food of restaurant standard. To be cooking for Michelle Rue Jr. today is, yeah, mind-blowing, it's exciting. It's everything else that you want. It's cooking full of the best of the best. I'm quite nervous, actually. It's like your first day at school. All right, Robert. Hey, Chef. Can you tell us what you're cooking today? Pan-fried sea bass with ginger, coriander, chilies running through it, and then the sea bass with a new potato puree. One's very European, the other one takes a hint from uh, East Asia. It's very much represented me in my food. I've spent lots of time traveling around the world. And it is Pan-Asian. That gets me fired up. That gets me really hyperactive. Where do you see yourself in five years' time, Robert? Five years' time is my own restaurant. For me to fail isn't really an option for me. I've really got to push this, and I've really got to win this competition. You are halfway, guys. You've got 25 minutes left. I was disappointed in the uh, elimination round. Obviously, I'm a bit nervous, but I just need to get in there and get stuck in and do the best I can. How did you get into cooking? Um, I started cooking with uh, my nan, my grand, my mum, just baking and things like that. Um, and then uh, I started off as a pot wash, worked my way up from there. 
You were looking forward to cooking for Michelle. <laughs> How do you feel now? Not as nervous as last time. I was still nervous. But I'm still looking forward to it and, and hearing your feedback and your comments. You've got 15 minutes left. 15 minutes to go. It's flying. Being a chef, you do have to sacrifice quite a lot just because you work those long hours. I've had to sacrifice my friends, my family, most of them my daughter. But you have to make these sacrifices to get to the top of this game. All right, Jamie. Hi. What are you cooking for us? I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to do a little sea bass, pan fried with a little niçoise salad. A niçoise has tuna in it. Food shouldn't have to be set in stone. They shouldn't have to be one way of doing everything. It, you should be able to do whatever you want. You know, you should have freedom in cooking. Just because it's an Eastwell doesn't mean you have to have tuna with it. If it, you know, you can do whatever you want. You have three minutes left. Just three minutes. Start plating it up. You got 60 seconds. That's it. Time's up. Despite his nerves, David has made a first dish of sea bass on crushed new potatoes, pancetta, spinach and herbs with a salsa verde. Good presentation. Mmm. Everything on this plate combines well. The fish is well cooked. It's well seasoned. But you've left the rind on the bacon and some stalks on the spinach. Little, little things make a big difference. I wouldn't be unhappy if that was served up to me in a restaurant. By and large, I think it's decent. His second dish is sea bass with braised fennel and a creamy gazpacho sauce. Lovely colours. Again, good presentation. Thank you. Yeah? I like the taste, it's beautifully seasoned, well cooked. I'm just not sure about this creamed tomato sauce. It's a little bit too heavy. The sauce doesn't allow a lot of aniseed to get through, but it does allow the fish to come through. Oh, it's, it's really almost lovely. We've got the morning out of the way, which puts you a bit more at ease. I think it's going to be the next uh, stage that makes or breaks. Dad of one Jamie has made a salad niçoise with a twist, using sea bass instead of tuna. I think this looks lovely. I love the colours. It looks really appetising. Mmm, nicely cooked fish, crispy skin. I like the fact that you've roasted the tomatoes as well, rather than just putting raw tomatoes in there. If this was presented to me, I would happily eat it. I doubted whether the sea bass would work in the niche was. It does work. Absolutely lovely. Jamie's second dish is herb-crusted sea bass with crushed potatoes, salsa verde and a fennel and orange salad. The sea bass again, really well cooked. This lovely salsa verde or green sauce works beautifully with the sea bass. But with orange, nah. Potato and orange shouldn't be on the same plate. Heaven knows with that sort of flavour combination why anybody would want to put a chunk of orange in there. You've got to learn when to say halt. My second dish, I think I did take it one step too far but the comments they said, they spurred me on to come back better, faster, stronger. 
ex-roofer Robert's first dish is pan-fried sea bass with roasted charlotte potato puree, pancetta and capers. <laughs> lovely combinations. Really, really lovely, well-cooked sea bass, perfectly seasoned. Nice skin. It's a good dish. I think you've got cooking ability here. I think you know the standard that we require. If I sat in a restaurant and that came up to me, I'd be very happy. I think that's a glorious dish. His second dish is an Asian fusion of pan-fried sea bass on a tomato compote spiced with fennel, ginger, chili, coriander and saffron and sautéed spinach. This is fusion. There's no two ways about it. And I would say there are very few chefs that can cook fusion food properly. You've got saffron in there, the coriander at the end, the chili. There's a bit of citrus in there as well. Although there really is a mixture of flavours in there. For me, this works. It's lovely, it's Moorish. Despite all those flavours, they are balanced. Woo! I'd like to see more of your cooking. I really would. When Michelle tastes my food, it's virtually like heart stopping, whether his eyes go up or goes down, and you get the frown on the face, and he came up with a smile, and his eyes lift. So I, I was over the moon when he tasted my food. We are only halfway. You've got a big test to come. Off you go. Well done. I think we've had a great morning. We have got three very good chefs here. David looked very nervous, but once he got cooking, I think he lost some of that nervousness and really got into it. The first dish of David's was the sea bass across the crushed potatoes. The flavours were lovely. And he's got a good eye for presentation. His food was beautifully presented. Deep down, I think he is a good chef, and he's proved that to us today. I'm really going to go for it. I've got to put everything on the line and do the best I can to stand a chance of getting through to the next round. Jamie gave us an absolutely delicious niçoise. I doubted sea bass in a niçoise. I was wrong. Good dish. In my view, it showed an enormous amount of skill and judgment. His second plate of food, for me, was, was, was not right, because how on earth can you put oranges on the same plate as potatoes? It's never going to work. In this level, you could, you're not, there's not really much room for error or mistakes, so you've got to get it perfect every time. Wow, I really, really enjoyed Robert's food. The sea bass and that lovely creamy mashed potato was masterful. And then Robert gave us this fusion-style sea bass. Very, very few chefs know how to put that amount of ingredients into one dish and make it work. And it did. His palate, it seems, is expert. We may have uncovered a bit of a talent here. I am bouncing pretty high at the moment, but I know I can't put it all in one basket. I've not got one more round to go and I could lose it all in the second round, so I'm keeping my feet firmly on the ground. I think that all three of them should be able to cook well in the classic recipe test. They all look like accomplished chefs. It's going to make for a fascinating contest. got one hour and 20 minutes for these two great classical dishes. In front of you, you have a recipe for soft egg ravioli. Very tricky. We also want you to cook a poached pear in red wine with Chantilly cream. Three chefs, one quarterfinal place. Your destiny's in your own hands, guys. Cook very well. Off you go. Ravioli is an Italian dish originally invented as a means of using up leftover food, consisting of small envelopes of pasta dough with a meat or vegetable stuffing. Today's ravioli will have a ricotta and chorizo filling topped with a soft egg yolk. First of all, they have to make their pasta. 
They then roll it out really thinly to the right thickness. Too thick and it'll be horrible and chewy. Too thin and it'll fall apart. You've got to be able to put that filling in and the egg yolk without breaking it. Very tricky. And delicately crimping the edges so that nothing escapes. And the pasta has to be cooked to exactly the right moment so as when you cut through the ravioli, the egg yolk is still runny, but the pasta and filling is cooked. Very difficult to achieve that. Their second classic is pears poached in red wine with Chantilly cream, which is flavoured with vanilla. The perfect poached pear needs to be peeled beautifully, not just any old way or cut into quarters, it's cored from underneath, but leaving that pear intact. It has to be submerged in a syrup made of sugar, red wine, and various spices and flavorings. Simmered away gently until tender. It is a flavor sensation when you get it absolutely right. All right, Robert, how do you feel about these recipes? Yeah, I feel I should be okay on this one. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. What do you think we're looking for from you? You can see like a Jude Fusion, but you want to know if I could do the basics as well, because you can't be a one-trick pony, you've got to be able to do both sides of it. And how much do you fancy a quarter-final place? I would actually die for a quarter-final place, I want it badly. After a good round this morning, he looks confident. I think he could get this right. You've had half an hour already. Jamie, how did you feel when the recipes were announced? To be honest, I felt a bit nervous because I've never ever heard of a soft egg ravioli really, ever. It's a tricky one. It'll make you or break you. <laughs> it can make or break, indeed. Were you planning on adding a uh, now infamous Jamie Twist? No, not this one. No, it's classical. You know, it's got to keep it. Keep it as it is. I love the way so far he's been working that pair. But let's not go too fancy. What I don't want to see is something wacky, something odd. You've got 15 minutes left. That's it. All right, David, do you understand these recipes? I feel quite confident. Um, obviously, I'll just give it my best, my best shot. That's all I can do. You seem a lot less nervous. You seem to be more in control of yourself. I feel more in control. Um, I'm still nervous, but I'm just trying to focus and on concentrate on what I'm doing and do it the best that I can. David seems to have lost those nerves and he's full-on concentrated on the job. His presentation was good. Can he keep that presentation going through his two dishes today? Five minutes left and a quarter-final place up for grabs. Sixty seconds to go. Time's up. With a quarter final place at stake, the chef's classic dishes must reach the standards Michelle requires. First under scrutiny is their soft egg ravioli. David, we're going to start with you. David has made a butter and sage emulsion to go with his ravioli. I do think your ravioli look a little bit big. However, they are thin, which is a good sign. The egg yolk is runny. Well done. Thank you very much.
the pasta is cooked. The emulsion, the liquid that you've given me in there, it works. Mission accomplished. Your pasta is very well made. It's a uh, job very well done. Thank you. Jamie has topped his dish with a lemon-infused olive oil. I can hear your heartbeat from here. Mmm, oh yeah. The yolk is still running, which really is the, the most difficult part. You have cooked the ravioli well, and your little twist, that lemon-infused oil, it's very good. In fact, it's better than very good. Well done. Thank you. The first flavour is a very pleasing lemon. Very nice, makes the whole thing very, very fresh. I think you have done very well, Jamie. Robert has served his ravioli with deep-fried basil leaves. Right. The yolk is very runny. In fact, it's too runny. And also, your pasta's not quite cooked enough. You can taste the raw dough. It's not right. I couldn't eat them. Couldn't eat them. You shouldn't really have to chew pasta. It's the last chance for the chefs to impress with their poached pears in red wine and Chantilly cream. David? Mm. Your pears beautifully cooked. The syrup is delicious. But you didn't call the pear. Great shame. I'm getting excited because that is lovely. Lovely. The comments I received from Michelle and Greg really did please me. And things like Mission Accomplished, you know, it makes you feel great. I like the presentation. For me, though, not enough sauce. I must compliment you, though, on the little collar of the pear. It really is top-notch. Well done. Your pear's cooked through. It's been cored. Yeah, that's good dessert. Very good dessert. The work that went into that beautifully presented dessert is, is admirable. I'm feeling overwhelmed. I'm happy to have Michelle Rouge and say your food's really good. It's a chef's dream, isn't it? Robert, first of all, uh, you've put Chantilly on the top of your pear and it's, it's slid all the way down. It's odd. Right, let's taste this pear. Oh. Ha! <laughs> what a shame you didn't take the core out. Your pear's well cooked and the wine syrup is really flavorful. It's got the spices in there, not too much. It's good, it's very good. I think your flavors are there, I think your presentation's not. I am feeling a little bit disappointed. I know the stupid mistakes that I made. Oh. But I've learned from them now and I'm quite sure next time it won't be like that. We've got three chefs here who have produced some fantastic food. I'm bowled over. Robert started off really strongly. That sea bass on the mashed potato was sublime. I can't praise it highly enough. And he followed it up with another strong dish. Fusion food, very few chefs understand that. However, I think Robert got it right. In the classic recipe test, he let himself down. The ravioli were severely undercooked. It was not good to eat. No way. As for his pear, he left the core in, which is not nice to eat. 
but the flavour in the sauce was nice and the pear was cooked very, very well. To be sent home now today it would be pretty soul destroying. I've, I, I really want this party. David gave us two sea bass dishes. The first one looked very smart. Likewise, his second sea bass dish, it really did look the part. But that creamed tomato orange sauce, for me, didn't do it. And as for the ravioli, wow! Ah, the pasta was spot on. It was too big, but the yolk was runny, and that is not an easy dish. I can't emphasise <laughs> enough how much I enjoyed that dessert of David's. It was lovely. But he didn't take the core out. He zigzagged the, the syrupy sauce all over the plate. He lost his way on the presentation. I do hope it's me that goes through to the quarterfinals, so it's fingers crossed, really. Jamie started off with a niçoise salad using uh, the sea bass instead of tuna. I thought that was good, very good. Not so his next sea bass dish, because he had lovely buttery potatoes, but he put a fennel and orange salad with it as well. I mean, do you dip potato chips in an orange juice? No way. I don't want to see that again. That was horrible. Ah! But he gave us the best ravioli dish in my mind. That lemon-infused olive oil was inspired. That really carried off that dish beautifully. His pear and red wine, he cut a beautiful collar around the top of the pear. It looked absolutely pretty as a picture. And it's how I present the pears in my restaurant. That's finesse. Tell me, Shavri, you're going to say your food is really good or it's exceptional or it's perfect. That is... That's enough for me, that's, you know. I'm really impressed by these three guys. They are good. But we have to choose now which one is going to really shine in the next round and possibly even go all the way. Chef going through to the quarter-final is... Jamie. Players cannot describe how I feel. It is amazing. Well, I'm feeling pretty gutted. I'm obviously disappointed to have gone out in this round. Maybe the pressure just got to be a bit too much. Now I've got through to the quarterfinals. I really, really want to win. Get in. Jamie will be back for the quarterfinal to battle it out for the title of professional master chef. <laughs>